Hey, welcome to my electronics channel. And in this video, I want to talk about average voltage and average current and show you a few examples on how you calculate these things. I'm just going to base all of my examples on average voltage. Average current is calculating average current is going to basically be the same. It's just you're just going to be looking at a current value instead of at a voltage value. So calculating averages is something that you should all be familiar with. And let's take an example of calculating average grades. And I know that you're all going to be super high achievers after watching my videos. So let's say that student one has a grade of 90, student two has a grade of 85, student three has a grade of 87%, student four has a grade of 93, and student five has a grade of 95. Now amongst all these high achievers, we want to figure out what is the average amongst all of these. And these are five discrete different values. So all that we do is we take each one of the values, 90, 85, 87, 93, 95, and just add them all together. That gives us a sum total. And then the next step, of course, is to divide by the total number of discrete things that you have. In this case, we've got five different students. So adding all those numbers up, dividing by five, gives us an average of 90, or 90%. 90 These are all percentages, of course. Now, when you're looking at signals, it's when you're averaging a signal, you're not averaging distinct things like we are in this example. We are averaging a signal as it changes over time. So over some time period, what is the average of that signal? So this, this uh, averaging can be a little tricky because you're not adding you're not necessarily adding distinct things together and in some cases in some cases it actually involves some integration so let's learn how to do the averaging of a signal or averaging a voltage or a current by looking at a few examples so the first example here is a very straightforward one if we have a 12 volt dc supply attached to some load what is the average voltage that gets applied to that load over time well I don't really have to do this, but let's plot out the voltage over time. So in this case, the voltage over time, it's going to be constant at 12 volts. So what's the average of a constant 12 volts over time? Well, of course, the average voltage for the system is going to be 12 volts. What if instead of this being a 12 volt source, it was a switchable source that could take on values of 3 volts, 5 volts, or 12 volts. And let's say we set it for 3 volts for a bit, and then switch it to 5 volts, and then switch it for, to 12 volt. So over that period of time where I switched from 3 to 5 to 12, what would the average voltage be? Let's say I have it over at 3 volts for a period of time, and then I switch that voltage to 5 volts for another period of time, and then I switch that voltage to 12 volts for another period of time. So over this time period, where I've switched it from 3 volts to 5 volts to 12 volts, what would the average voltage be? Well, what we basically want to do is take the area that's enclosed by all of this, so 3 volts over some period of time, and let's say this was 1 second, and then 5 volts over some other period of time, and let's say we're up to 4 seconds by this point, and then up at 12 volts up into up to seven seconds over the seven seconds we want to know what the average voltage is for that seven seconds so what we do is we could take this area plus this area plus this area divide by the total amount of time that it was at those three different voltages and then calculate from that the average voltage so the area of this block would be 3 volts times 1 second. The area of this block here would be 3 seconds. It was 5 volts at 3 seconds, so 5 volts times 3 seconds, plus the area under this block here. It's at 12 volts for another 3 seconds. The entire period of time that we're looking at is 7 seconds, so we would divide by the 7 seconds. And that gives us about 7.7 .7 volts. The average over the 7 seconds is 7.7 .7 volts.
So this is a little bit of a contrived example because you're not really going to care what the average voltage is for a system where you're switching from one voltage to another just arbitrarily. But it shows you a bit of an idea of the process of how you calculate the average voltage over a period of time. You're basically figuring, up, figuring out the area under the voltage curve and dividing by the total amount of time. Now this example is a little bit more of a realistic example of in a situation where you might want to calculate the average voltage. In this case, I've got a square wave being applied to a load of some kind. And let's say that square wave was a 70% duty cycle voltage with a peak value of 5 volts. So it's at 5 volts 70% of the time, and then it drops down to 0 volts for 30% of the time. And it repeats itself over and over and over again. 5 volts for 70% of the time, 3 volts for 30% of the time. I didn't draw this exactly right, but let's just assume that this is repeating itself over and over again. So one entire time period we'll designate as T, and that includes the high part and the low part of the signal. So it's at 5 volts for 70% of the time, so that means this time is 0.7T, and this time right here is 0.3T. So again, what we're basically doing is over this entire time period. And the reason that we can look at just one time period is because it's going to repeat itself over and over again. So it doesn't matter how many time periods we look at. If we take the area here on the time when it's at 5 volts and spread it out over the entire time period, that's going to give us the average voltage. So what I can do is figure out this total area, divide by the total time, and that's going to tell us what the average is. So the average voltage will be equal to this block. So that's 5 volts times 0.7 of the entire period plus 0 times 0.3 of the entire period divided by the entire period. This part of course goes away because it's, it's equal to 0. These two t's cancel out so the period doesn't really matter to figure out the average. It could be a period of one second, it could be a period of one microsecond. And this is going to be equal to 3.5 volts. What about the case where we have a triangle wave connected to a load of some kind? So what we can do is we can plot out this voltage over time. And let's say that this signal, well, I've already stated that it's triangular and it's repeating itself over time. So let's, and let's say that this peak is 10 volts. It keeps repeating itself over and over again, and this time period where it ramps up to a maximum and then drops back down to zero is the period. So again, to figure out what the average is, we only have to look at the one period. We don't have to look at everything beyond that because it's just going to repeat itself over and over again. We want to figure out what is the area under this curve, under this signal, and divide that by the total time, and that will give us what the average is. So the area under this triangle is going to be, of course, half the base times the height. So half the base being the period, the height being 10 volts. And we're dividing by the period. Those Ts cancel out, those periods cancel out, and we left, we're left with a voltage, an average voltage of 5 volts. All right, what about sinusoidal voltage? So sinusoidal voltage will look like this. and repeat itself over and over again. This here would be one period, and it spends some time above zero and some time below zero. And remember what we're doing is we want to look at the area under the curve divided by the total amount of time. So we take this area plus this area and divide by t. One thing that you should note about the sinusoids is they're going to spend equal amount of time above and below zero. So if this is area A, it's positive, then this is area negative A, it's negative. So if we add up the area over one time period, we get A plus negative A, we actually end up with zero. So the average voltage of a sinusoid is going to be zero.
Now what if I have a sinusoid plus some amount of DC offset? That signal would look something like this. This is my DC offset here. Then that sinusoid put on top of it would look something like that. So in order, the, formally, in order to calculate this, I would look at over one time period, which is that, what is the area under the curve? So that's going to be all of this area here, divide by that period. However, what I can look at is this DC offset and note that the amount of area above the DC offset and the amount of area below the DC offset are going to be equal to each other. And so they are going, it could basically take this area and plop it in here so that all you would be left over with is the DC part. So in this particular case, the average voltage is simply going to be the DC offset. One final example. In this example, we have an AC voltage connected to a rectifier to rectify the signal, in other words, to make it all positive, connected to a load. So what's the average voltage connected to the load going to be in this case? Let's start off with drawing that voltage. The sinusoid would look something like this. The rectification takes the negative part and puts it up to the positive side. So we'd get a, a signal that looks something like this. Initially, it was a sinusoid. So we would consider the full cycle to be like that. This negative part was taken up to the positive. So the period is actually two cycles here. So what this can be represented as, since if this was V of T, then this is the magnitude of V of T. So what we want to do, this is where the calculus comes in that I mentioned at the beginning. We want to find the area under the curve for one full cycle and then divide by that time period. So for this example, we, we're going to need to look at the formal definition for calculating the average voltage. In the previous ones, we could just sort of look at it and figure out what the, what the area under the curve is. But in this case, we'll have to do some calculus to calculate what the area under the curve is. So the average voltage is going is equal to the area under the curve, which is going to be the integral from 0 to t of the magnitude of v of t dt. That'll calculate the area under those two bumps there. And then divide by the total period. Now, one thing you can notice is that over one time period, we have this repeat of, of half the sine wave. And so instead of integrating over t, I can actually integrate over half of t. And I no longer have to worry about the absolute value. I can just integrate over half of t for v of t. And then my, my averaging now is going to be just done over half of t. Okay, so if I want to write this all out, if I want to write out the, the voltage expression, I'm integrating from 0 to t over 2 of v of t. So that's going to be, you can define it as having some peak voltage here, vp. It's a sine wave with some arbitrary frequency omega. Integrate that over dt, and then I'm averaging it. So I'm looking at the, the time period that I'm averaging over t over 2. And what I can recognize is that t is just arbitrary. And so, and instead of going over time, what I can do is, are, is integrate over the radians. So integrate over, instead of over this time, this is over 2 pi radians. And so I'm basically doing a, a change of variables. So I can, instead of going from 0 to t over 2, I'm actually going from 0 to pi, because I'm going over half of a cycle. And I can change the variables omega t to just something arbitrary alpha. And I'm integrating over alpha now. And dividing by half of a period, which is pi radians. So if I do this integration, what I get is negative of Vp cos alpha. And I was integrating from 0 to pi. So there's my 0 to pi term. And then this is divided by and okay, now when I go to evaluate this, I will get negative Vp cosine pi minus 
vp cosine of zero, all divided by pi. Cosine of pi is negative one minus cosine of zero, which is one. So I get a negative two, uh, but I've got a VP term here. So I'll have negative two VP, but I've got a negative sign out front here. So I'm going to get a two VP on the numerator divided by pi as my answer. And this is approximately equal to 0.637 VP. So going back to my signal here, a rectified sine wave, assuming ideal diodes so that we get the, the full sine wave getting rectified. The average of a rectified sine wave is equal to 0.637 times the peak voltage. Okay, this gives you a bit of an introduction to how to calculate the average of a signal. I showed some simple examples where you did not need to do any integration, and then an example where we did need to do a little bit of integration. But in general, integration will always solve, will always allow you to calculate the average voltage. So what we can say is given any arbitrary signal V of T, let's say as an arbitrary periodic signal V of T, the average voltage is going to be equal to the integral over the period of that voltage divided by the period or the time that you're integrating over. Okay, I hope that helps you understand calculating voltage averages. The exact same principles would apply to current as well. Thanks for watching. Average, 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 average voltage, average, average current, average, 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 yeah.